When we talk about women here, yes. it often has been neglected from very long, though this concept of neglecting it does not exist anymore. Let's enlighten us with Dr. Varam today who is going to tell us, break the myths about women hair health and enlighten us with more of the information and knowledgeable information about women's hair health. So thank you so much sir. Uh, when we talk about women hair health especially, uh, it's a concept which people don't believe on and uh, I think the uh, only thing is like you can wash the hair with shampoo and conditioner that's all you need for a healthy hair yes. health so when we talk about women hair health what can be the causes for the hair or, or the bad hair condition for the women okay so see um, traditionally hair loss baldness has been associated with men only predominantly but now we are seeing lots of female patients also who come to us not for baldness but for excessive hair fall, loss of volume, hair thinning and certain hair problems like split ends, frizzy hair, lengthless hair. So we are seeing more and more uh, female patients who come to us for their hair concerns. So definitely hair loss, hair problems in women is on a rise. So it is prudent. Thank you so much for having me here to talk about this very pertinent topic. Now, the most common causes of female hair loss as of now is telogen effluvium, which you can call seasonal hair fall, post fever hair fall, post stress, post pregnancy hair fall, where lady loses massive chunks of hair. Second is hormonal hair loss because of lifestyle, uh, because of the food that we eat, because of PCOD, which is getting very, very common, again, the lifestyle problem. Hormonal imbalances happen in a female's body, which can cause hair thinning and loss of volume. And in extreme cases, baldness also, not frank baldness like what we see in men, but badly visible scalp. Third is alopecia areata, which is a, more of a skin condition where you have inflammatory cells eating up the hair follicles. So these three primarily are the most common and then less common ones are hypothyroidism and uh, you know, as we discussed, uh, in, improper nutrition. So when we talk about hair fall, can certain medical drugs or medical medicines prescribed by doctors, not just for the hair, but for any condition in women or any, you know, medical, serious medical condition also can lead to hair fall? Yes, so more than the drugs, uh, medical conditions cause hair fall. Uh, most common is hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is a common cause of hair thinning and hair loss in women. Second is post fever. Any illness which is acute, then acute means uh, has happened suddenly and is too much can also cause hair fall uh, after two to three months like we are seeing post covid post covid hair fall has been talked about a lot but not just covid it can happen after any fever it can happen after surgery it can happen after periods of illnesses mm -hmm. cancers we know that cancers itself cause hair fall mm -hmm. and treatment of cancer also the chemotherapeutic uh, medication that are used radiotherapy that is used that can also cause hair fall in medication uh, you know when you are, you know, if you have hypothyroidism and if your dose of thyroid medicine is too high, that can cause hair fall in itself. Also, commonly used acne medication called isotretinoin salt. You know, isotretinoin is a very commonly used acne medication in some patients that can also cause hair fall. And we have a lot of female patients taking isotretinoin for their acne problem. Mm -hmm. So that is a common medication that can cause hair fall in certain individuals. So when we talk about hair fall, uh, does just uh, you know, just as we have talked about hair styling, ki, hair coloring, ki. how does hair styling in women contributes in hair fall? How does it damages the hair? So see, now there are two parts of a hair as a layman. One is the root, which is inside the skin, and one is the hair shaft, the hair that you actually see out of the skin. So these styling, you know, uh, products, chemicals, uh, styling treatments that we do may not damage the hair root but it definitely damages the hair shaft because when you heat a hair shaft, when you expose your hair shaft to a chemical 
Okay. It breaks his cuticle. Cuticle is the protective layer, the outermost layer mm-hmm. of your hair shaft. So there is damage in the hair cuticle. There can be even damage in the sulfur bonds. Sulfur bonds is what puts the hair together, the hair shaft together. That's the sulfur bonds. So you may have heard of this thing called rebonding. Why it is called rebonding? Because yeah. it breaks and remakes the bonds, okay. and that also weakens the hair, which leads to easy breakability. Mm-hmm. And whether it is from the root or it is breaking to a patient to a person, it is hair fall. Mm-hmm. So these treatments, to answer your question, the treatments that uh, ladies are subjecting their hair to is weakening the hair bonds and damaging the hair cuticle, which is causing more breakage and thus the fall. So as we talked about, uh, you know, the keratin and everything. So normally. safety button that one can use after doing a rebonding it is not so because keratin in itself uses a lot of heat uses a lot of chemicals like formaldehyde which are not very safe so no it doesn't prevent the damage of rebonding doing keratin and you know that is just a way of explaining that uh, keratin gives uh, protein and it plucks the you know the damage and it not does not do that it makes a coat gives a shine to your hair but internally the hair cuticle and can get damaged when you even are doing keratin but when we see the practicality of it you know if somebody has very frizzy hair and would like to do that i say that you know you can go for formal dehyde based keratin mm-hmm. to make it you know, you know smoothen up the hair rather than straighten up the hair mm-hmm. straightening is something that i always ask my patients not to do because that is the worst thing that you can do with your hair keratin once in a while particularly formal dehyde free keratin is all right to be done if absolutely needed. So when we talk about uh, female uh, hair health, say nobody has no medical condition, uh, no medication has been taken. Can genetically in the family can be promoted from one person to another, especially in females as a uh, hair fall condition? Yes, absolutely. Uh, again, genetic hair loss was predominantly considered as a male centric problem, but now we know that ladies also face genetic hair loss. Mm-hmm. So and not not necessarily from the mother side, it came from the father side also. So even you know uh, female pa- my female patients who have a positive family history of baldness in men also face hair thinning. No medical condition, no PCOD, no medication or anything that we can you know in their lifestyle that we can uh, pinpoint which is out of the ordinary, but just. genetic hormonal hair thinning mm-hmm. can happen in ladies also mm-hmm. men can get bald ladies do not get bald because of it mm-hmm. but definitely hair volume loss of hair volume can happen so when we talk about uh, say hair plantations uh, it's i think one of the most leasing procedure leasing yes. procedures right now for women or men to you know have healthy hair mm-hmm. so does uh, somewhere hair plantation also contributes in hair fall you know abhi kabhi aisa hota hai ki say normally sabke baal hote hain but they want more volume so they go for a uh, hair transplantation does that also that kind of a procedure and kind of the medicines which you prescribe to the patient can also lead to hair fall sometimes i am very glad that you put up that question because it's a common mistake that many patients do um is to get a hair transplant done for volume mm-hmm. see hair transplant is never done for volume mm-hmm. it's not the right treatment for volume mm-hmm. hair transplant is a treatment for baldness mm-hmm. to cover the bald patches mm-hmm. then a hair transplant is done so if somebody who just has hair thinning should never go for a hair transplant we get a lot of queries from our female patients that we want a hair transplant there is some thinning on the top let's do a hair transplant it's a wrong treatment it's a bad treatment mm-hmm. so first of all hair transplant should not be done for hair thinning and this is a, a common mistake that is being done around to answer your question yes hair transplant in itself can cause hair fall so mm-hmm. suppose 
either a male or a female has got a head transplant then it's a surgery mm-hmm. so we talked about uh, medical illnesses and surgeries which can cause uh, telogen effluvium so a hair transplant can also call telogen effluvium in the layman terms it's called shock loss mm-hmm. the good thing is that these hair they come back you lose you may lose massive amounts of hair like you know post covid post a hair transplant or post any surgery but all these hair will come back so it is not a major concern hair loss after a hair transplant is not a major concern because it comes back but hair transplant should never be done for hair thinning okay so jab hum sir baat karte hain about heena aur mehndi ठीक है ये भी एक कॉमन लोगों को रेमेडी लगता है कि अगर हेल्दी हेयर चाहिए या ब्लैक हेयर चाहिए यू कैन मिक्स लॉट ऑफ स्टफ विद हीना से कॉफी एग्स यूजुअली मिक्स इट विद एंड देन अप्लाइड फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम डस दैट हीना कंट्रीब्यूट्स इन अ हेल्दी हेयर ग्रोथ और द हेयर फॉल uh henna and uh, particularly henna and kali mehndi these are coloring agents mm. but they neither promote hair uh, health nor deteriorate hair health mm. if it is a pure herbal henna mm. which mostly it is not mm. because anything which is purely herbal will not give you black color mm. black color will come only through chemicals mm. so if any henna or mehndi is giving you black color it is not herbal it is with chemicals so it can deteriorate your hair health mm. if you, you are using it very regularly mm. pure herbal henna will not deteriorate your hair but also will not give you very beautiful hair color so no but you know using egg yolk using uh, you know curd can improve your hair by conditioning your hair so oil egg yolk curd these things condition your hair and you know, reduce uh, the fungal growth reduce your dandruff so these are okay to be used on the hair and henna is also totally medically neutral pure henna. So when we talk about, say, uh, right now, we just talked about conditioning your hair naturally. So people applying lot of curd oil. So I have also this question arising that oil lagate hain hum. Normally people start using oil from the roots yes. and then go down. Yes. So does apply applying oil on the roots mm-hmm. promote hair growth or it's just giving you conditioning? Okay, so there is a lot of debate about it. Mm. Uh, scientifically speaking, hair oil does not do anything about the hair root because it is too thick to penetrate the skin and then nourish your roots. Huh. What we see in the ads, those contrast graphics that we see in the ads, that a shampoo or a hair oil is penetrating the hair root and nourishing mm. it, mm. it is just a way of selling it. You know. So, in my opinion, applying hair on the scalp will not stimulate your hair root. The massaging motion. can increase your blood flow and may be helpful whether you are doing it with water or oil that does not matter in the massaging motion yeah. the correct way of using a hair oil is to apply it on the length of the hair so you need not apply it on the skin you just need to apply it on the on the uh, on the hair length and that is how it conditions your hair it uh, strengthens the hair cuticle that we talked about it uh, gives a shine to your hair but it does not do anything about the hair root the promoters of oil or let's say the debate here the, the counter debate here is that when you see uh, people from kerala for example for for whom it's a tradition since long time to apply coconut oil and in general if you, you know see in us indians kerala people ladies of kerala ladies of kerala really have better hair than uh, long people from long thick yes. hair Black. so so yeah. when you see that and you know you just do a let's say superficial comparison there are there are you know certain you know this is a reason to you know argue that may be oiling your hair since a very young age and doing it regularly may improve your hair but long term studies are needed to actually prove it right now whatever scientific data is that we have and even if you think it theoretically hair oil will not promote uh, you know not nourish your root it will nourish your shaft So when we talk about some uh, kind of home remedies, so as you talked about the egg yolk and the curd, so can you suggest some of the hair remedies for somebody who does not believe in conditioner, medical conditioner, or the market conditioner? How can they nourish their hair? Oil, their hair? oiling, oiling is the best. My favorite is coconut oil, mm. but you can use any kind of oil, almond oil, sarso, kadeel. Uh, olive oil any oil uh, when applied to the hair shaft left for 30 minutes and then you wash it is a good conditioning agent so if you do not want to use uh, a commercially uh, available conditioners it's totally fine you can pre condition your hair with uh, with oil also after the shampoo if you feel the hair your hair is still dry and frizzy you can apply two drops of 
oil from the top, argan oil, maracan oil, these things work very well. You don't have to apply it on the scalp, okay? it will make the hair messy, it doesn't look nice. But you can apply it gently from the top, just like you use any serum. So instead of a serum, you can use a, a soft oil like argan oil or olive oil. Olive oil doesn't smell very nice, argan oil is something that you can definitely use.